Hi guys, James T here. Welcome to my vlog. Today we're going to be talking to a musician friend of mine. His name is Jesse, Jesse O'Neill. Uh, we also call him Jesse Blue. He plays in a number of bands that I've, uh, that I've watched over the years. He also is a, a craftsman when it comes to building guitars from scratch. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of those. We're going to talk about some of the history of music. Uh, we're going to look uh, at his, some of his favorites and uh, uh, eventually he will be doing some music here on this vlog. Uh, hopefully he's going to produce a little bit of music for the intro and exit parts of uh, my, my vlog. So let's switch over to that. It's going to be an interesting talk. And we'll be talking a little bit more about music here in another week or so uh, with another performing artist from in town. And we're going to be looking at some of the music scenes and some of the best places you can go. Of course, we've got lots of music festivals, and we'll talk about those as well. Okay? So, let's switch over to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, edit those out. I'll edit those out. Hey, uh, welcome to my vlogs. James T. here. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking to Jesse, an old friend of mine. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, music and some of his craft in actually producing these instruments that you see in front of you. Jesse, how you doing today? My left shoe's a little tight, but other than that, I'm feeling all right. Awesome, you sound like a bassist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I should hope so after this many years, yeah. All right, so these are all oh, yeah. products of your craft. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me and the cat uh, down in a leaky little basement, uh, remembering who I was as a Frustrated ten-year-old just doodling guitar shapes instead of schoolwork. Yeah, we've all been there. Uh huh. I just never grew out of it. Yeah, mine was tanks. Okay. And, you know stuff like that. You know. Right on. Uh, I didn't. I don't have a musical, you know, bit of talent in any bit of me. I can listen. <laughs> I know a lot of people who I would consider musicians who don't play instruments. Oh, okay. I have been around some of those audio files that pull out their quadraphonic recorded copy of the wall and get mm -hmm. all into it. Mm -hmm. They're as much a musician as people who sit around and figure these machines out. Yeah. Well, you, you became kind of like addicted to it, right? And that's one of the ways that it becomes like this kind of craft. Is you, really, so. you really kind of have to become addicted to it, don't you? Yeah. Um, yeah I, honestly, I think it started when I saw Purple Rain when I was a kid. I was mm -hmm. nine years old when that movie came out. And a nine-year-old has no business watching it, but there I was. And for whatever reason, that was the catalyst. And here's what you see today. Obviously, this was influenced by our hero. Oh, no doubt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it started from there. I never had very many friends coming up. I was kind of a loner. I was only child. Had a lot of different familial situations. The constant for me was my music collection that I could take. Back then, it was cassettes. Ask your parents, kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, that would follow me around everywhere I'd go and I kind of it was written on more than one report card as I was coming up from from fourth grade on you know Jesse lives in a fantasy world you know things like that hmm. and so I just never I grew those. up <laughs> <laughs> I just never grew out of that yeah. um, it's it's been an escape a release I used to sit around when I was a kid and just dream up guitar shapes and things like that this is actually the earliest shape that I ever drafted I was 16 when I first well, drew that shape that, that, that. on a piece of poster board in my bedroom. Well, I'll yeah. stand. That's awesome. All right. So tell me, when it comes to actually building your your instruments, where did you get started? Where, how did that actually start? How did you build your first piece <laughs> and all that? Where, exactly that like on? almost every other builder I've ever met did. You tear up your first guitar that you're given as a kid mm -hmm. <laughs> or that you bought or whatever it may be. You tear it up thinking yeah. you're modifying it, making it better. Um, the night I got my first bass, in fact, I was taking it apart just to see how the machine worked <laughs> after I was done making noise with it. Um, of course. Yeah, and look at me now. Um, <laughs> then it evolved from there because my dad's a carpenter, and so I had access to power tools that I had no business using. Be safe, kids. Look, I can still count to ten without <laughs> taking my shoes off. That's important. Uh, safety first. Um, or third. Whenever you think about it, safety at all yeah. costs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, I just I started by modifying existing instruments, and of course I'd tear them up. But by the time of my fourth or fifth 
attempt, mm-hmm. I started realizing wood has grain and just, mm-hmm. the cert, you know, bear in mind, I'm also at this point a 12, 14 year old kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just obsessed by them. I used to go over to my friend's houses and if there was a guitar that had been sitting in a corner that nobody touched for years, all dusty and, you know, two strings all rusted on it. Mm-hmm. Next time I went over to that guy's house or whoever it was, I'd bring a pair of pliers and a set of guitar strings and just put it on my lap and, you know, people would be looking at me, what do you do? We don't play that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and you could, you yeah. know, <laughs> just clean it up, because, you know, um, and it just snowballed from there, and then yeah. I used to, instead of comics, I had all the guitar magazines that would come out at the time, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just talking about the late 80s, early 90s, and, you know, I'd pour over the pages, and I'd see all the different shapes, mm-hmm. and i find out there are other people making handmade stuff, yeah. the guy who made the one for prints from the movie was a guy very much like me, he was mm-hmm. just a dude who worked on guitars and he actually got commissioned to build the first one and awesome. he had never it was actually his first build his name his name was uh, David Roussan wow and that was that pretty was, good yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> he didn't know what was gonna happen he said he literally uh, apparently saw it for the first time in action on the movie screen like everybody else did wow and it's such an iconic thing to me you know mm-hmm. so I always liked original stuff that way mm-hmm. and uh, so nobody was making what I wanted I also grew up broke ass white trash, which means I couldn't afford what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was a big factor right there. And I didn't realize uh, the thing about instrument building, at least these kinds of things, you don't get into it to get rich. Um, you know, as much work goes into doing them by hand the way I have to do it, because everything's kind of a one off. Um, you know, even if you get three or four thousand dollars for an instrument, a lot of times you're really not even making a minimum wage when you calculate the hours yeah. and the cost yeah. of the materials and, and all of that. Never mind all the years it takes to learn how to... To do it. To, yeah, Just to the, carve on wood. But, you know, yeah. that's... Uh, and I used to hate that part of it for years. When it, was, when it was something that I always had to do, I took for granted the gift of what it is to be able to do it I mean, lot. the form, the form itself. Yeah. And it's a lot of sitting over the thing for just hours at a time. Mm-hmm. Now I use it as kind of a Zen thing. It's mm-hmm. or very much my yoga is making sawdust on these things and putting awesome. a little shape and, and just making it here as you your whole world disappears down to about a sixteenth of an inch squared mm-hmm. at a time as you grid these things out as you're working on them. Mm-hmm. I've learned to really appreciate it. In fact I wish I had a little more time to be able to spend doing that. Yeah. Knowing what I know now. Yeah. Alright, well um tell me about this piece. You told me earlier this is your favorite This piece, is my right? new favorite toy, yeah. I uh it is a fifteen string bass guitar with I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera. It's got purple lights in it. And I started it uh, right after Prince died. Okay. So this was a two-year build. <laughs> it looks it. Because I just it. finished it in February, just in time. Uh, maybe folks aren't aware. His original band that played in the movie. The, all, there were five other people that helped right. him make that music. Right, right, right. Uh, started touring. They got back together again after 30 years and started touring again very shortly after he died. And so they happened to be in Atlanta, uh, right? Literally one week after I finally got the strings on this thing. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to take it backstage and have them all autograph it. That's and so this amazing. is the one they're going to bury me with. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> I'll sell everything awesome. else. Yeah. And, uh, so I was really happy with that. And it got such a good reaction from the band members themselves. I assume these were pretty seasoned people. They're professional musicians. Yeah. And each one of them kind of did a did a double take, cartoon style, when they saw this. You know, the eyes bugging out and whatnot. And that made me happy. I haven't actually gotten a chance yet to play it out in front of folks, but mm-hmm. uh, it's on the way. And, and I hope that this thing sticks with me for as long as I'm making music. Yeah. Um, well, I think it looks This fellow is actually the oldest in my personal collection. These are just my personal ones. I mean, everything else is gets shipped off as soon as it's ready. That's why we have works in progress here. The ones I hang on to, are, you know, these are mine. Now, this one I've seen probably more than any other. Oh, yeah. I've seen you play, play this one, but mm-hmm. this one I've seen more than anything else. Yeah, his, he's an electric upright bass. His name is Mongo. And that's what I did for 15 years for my living, uh, was make these things. It's, it's like the big bass violin, but it's electric, so it's a stick on a stand. Um, yeah, that's what it is. It's like literally, you know, yeah. Um, and I made this one for myself in 2008. I did this from 2002 up to now. Uh, the issue is that I became such a workaholic while I was doing these that over 15 years I made a little over 2,000 of them. And wow. So now, and it's still kind of a novelty instrument. It's not something you see every day. So we're at a point now where so many people who want one 
either have one or can buy a used one at this point because there's mm-hmm. enough of them out there in this little part of the industry, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that they're they're readily available. Although I still I still build them occasionally. I get maybe a call for one a month at this point when it used okay. to be one a week. Yeah. Um, so it's so it's tapered off on that front a little bit, um, but I'm at the tail end of raising kids and it saw that they were provided for as best as I could for all those years <laughs> yeah, and we're yeah. at the finish line now so yeah. it's probably time to move on in fact I'm, after I finish this I decided I might like to start concentrating a little bit more on what I my first love is actually being out in front of people yeah and playing yeah. this stuff like the music yeah yeah I mean it's it's I love I will always I hope I will always uh, sit in my shop and and make sawdust and make these weird things that I have in my head. You know, mm-hmm. this is not something you can just go into uh, the evil corporation <laughs> that shan't be named Center right there next to Toys R Us. You know the one. You can't go in there and buy something like that. You know, yeah. um, and that's still my joy is mm-hmm. having an idea. I'll be watching a movie or maybe even an old one, especially a sci-fi one from the from the eighties or or seventies. And just get an idea, something that mm-hmm. looks like a spaceship, mm-hmm. and I'll make it. Uh, and I have, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot other than just the having done so many. Yeah. Uh, to be able to slap one of these things together, I mean, for lack of a better term, and just mm-hmm. at this point, put what's in my head into a piece of wood. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I've seen you bow this one. Yeah. I've seen you, you know. I've seen you beat on it. Yeah. And seen you all kind of stuff. And, yeah. yeah, all kinds of stuff to it. <laughs> Now a piece like this, mm-hmm. who's who's going to buy this? Who who's going to use this? I mean, <laughs> uh, a band like Genesis actually used to use double necks, and they wrote their music around what they could do with different sections. These were the bands that used to have fifteen minute long songs back when folks had attention spans, folks. Yeah. Um, you know those early seventies albums, all that progressive music that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first person to play a double neck that I'm aware of uh, was Jimmy Page doing Stairway to Heaven. We all oh, know that song wow. and, yeah. and it was, my understanding is that the double neck came along right around the same time they were doing that album. And after they finished that song, they realized they had no way to pull it off live because it has to go between two instruments so quickly and there's only a four person group. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was right around the same time Gibson had put out the, the SG double neck that he played. Mm-hmm. This, he's made rather iconic over the years. And from there, it snowballed. There's been people, you know, from the Eagles to... Mm-hmm. Uh, Seems Jensen's. like I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so they have their uses. This, I will be the first to admit, I don't need all of that. I don't need 15 <laughs> strings, I don't need, you know. I can play everything I need to on the same four strings everybody else does. It's just a matter of, I do love the gee whiz factor whenever I put that in front of mm-hmm. folks. Whenever I do a gig with this guy, you know, I play in... You know your average bars, your you know drinking establishments all throughout the southeast. Yeah, uh, to put it another way, woo! And <laughs> I'll always have a semicircle of people standing in front of this stuff before our show, or sometimes after the show, mm-hmm. just interested in it. And and this day and age, getting somebody's attention is a major achievement. It is not easy. <laughs> it is definitely yeah, not I, easy I, to I, get somebody's attention and hold it for more mm-hmm. than a few seconds. Right, right. Doubt. So, you know, you, you bring stuff like this in, you give it some few special effects. Yeah. Right there, this one's got them too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know how much this will show up on camera. Um, and, yeah, then you have an in to be able to, to reach folks if you're a performer. And yeah. I always thought that was really important. It's kind of why I like original designs. We've all seen yeah. Fenders and Gibsons. Yeah. I, I work on them. They're everywhere. Almost a daily basis. Yeah. And we've all seen them. We know what they do. They're very familiar. They're Ford Escort. They're Ford and Chevy. I'll, I'll put it that way, you know. Those two big iconic companies. But mm-hmm. they, it's been done. Mm-hmm. And so I like doing stuff that maybe somebody hadn't seen. It just, for anybody who would get one of these, it's unique. Yeah, no doubt. I leave, just to put this out there, I've often left some of these in the car with no, and just gone shopping with no fear of them getting shoplifted because... What are you going to do with one of these? It's the only one like it. It's not like mm-hmm. it can't be picked up out of a lineup, you know. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. somebody who has one of these, it's if it gets stolen, it's just going to have to live somewhere where no one can enjoy it at all. You can't yeah. just pawn it 
you can't right. take it somewhere and you know this is of this model or whatever because they each one of them is so quickly identifiable because they're yeah. all so different yeah well there's no labels or anything on the, the anybody uh, at a pawn shop would look at it it has your yeah, name yeah, on it has my name on it and they're going to look, look at, at it, it. Yeah. and not know mm -hmm. and go oh, i don't know what that is yeah, i'll give you, you know? 50 bucks for it you know it's yeah, the best you could hope for it's not worth a thief's effort yeah uh, it really isn't Huh. So that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got a built-in you know theft deterrent, mm -hmm. and you know it's so valuable. I mean, uh, I know you've sold uh, several pieces to you know notable artists. Some, right? some, some. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to name drop. Them. <laughs> do you, do you have a couple names? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Might be one using of the, your pieces. One of the joys of my life, aside from actually the the reason I was even able to get this signed was that I built one of my uprights for Brown Mark from the Revolution. And yeah, one of my childhood. Yeah, I used to sit and listen to these records. I still sit and listen to these records. Um, records are the big black CDs with the hole in the middle. You, yeah. you ask your parents. Spin slow. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. <laughs> uh, ask your parents. Um, but I, I, he has one of my uprights, which was a joy for me. And then I later got to meet him, and and then uh, through him. Uh, Wendy has one of my guitars, awesome. who was certainly one of my heroes. Uh, oh, she's no doubt. one of my all-time favorite musicians. Aside from what she's done with Prince, uh, they've she and Lisa have scored movies. They were on all of Seal's best records mm -hmm. uh, early on. They've worked with Madonna, Grace Jones, just huge. They're real musicians that work in the industry and make mm -hmm. that magic yeah. uh, regularly. Uh, another fun one for me uh, was Brian Ritchie from the Violent Femmes, who were never a huge band really? when I was a kid, but I got to sit in with them twice, and they were one of my favorites coming up, and he actually contacted me on, I had one of these listed on eBay once, and I, I may still have the email saved somewhere, it was just, uh, I was doing cartwheels down the hallway that day, <laughs> like a 10 year old, when he said, hi, this is Brian Ritchie from the Violent Femmes, I don't know if you know who I am, but blah blah blah, I like your bass, and I kind of had to... <laughs> Type them a very careful email back, you know. Yeah. Um, and so you did the that, whole fanboy, didn't you? Uh, I do my best not to when presented <laughs> with these folks, but with him, that was a little. I had to kind of just. I know you guys were never the biggest band, but in my house, you were. Uh, you know, I'm, I had some older stepsister, uh, step siblings for a little while when I was a kid who used to throw those John Hughes style '80s blowout teenage mm -hmm. bashes where furniture would be broken. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the parents are going to, you know, whoever threw that party is, you're not going to see them at school Monday, you know, after the parents find out. <laughs> and that's when you knew the party was getting really good was when the, the Femmes music would, would come on, inevitably. Yeah. You know, it yeah. would be late in the evening, and but that was the most fun I remember having as a kid. So getting to meet him and, and, and sit in with that band uh, twice uh, was a real joy. Um, that being said, I think the best musician I've ever been around, the person who I can sit with from me to you and just be in total awe of, uh, has been Reggie Wooten, who's okay. Victor Wooten's older brother. If you know anything about playing the bass guitar, the word Victor Wooten will come up somewhere along any uh, of the athletic level of, of what it takes to play these instruments well. Okay. Uh, put another way, he's regarded as one of the world's best. And yeah, he's part of a family who are each total virtuosos on their instrument and awesome. I've had a very good with, uh, relationship with Reggie for a number of years because he likes strange stuff that nobody else has done too yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so uh, he, he, he'd probably squeal if he saw this thing oh yeah, yeah well I've actually I've made him one more complicated than this wow really? it was uh, yeah it's 12 individual strings the neck on it is like 8 inches wide it's ridiculous and that's yeah it's, it's was he of like Massive no, hands he's got smaller he... hands than I do. Uh, oh. Yeah, but you, you'd be surprised how far you can actually reach if you if you do you move your position a little bit differently. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, he plays it. He can play the frets off a guitar. He is just one of those people yeah. that. Yeah. If... All right, so Jesse, tell me about this piece right here. This is my oldest friend in the arsenal. Um, his name is Mongo. Uh, I built him in 2008, and for a long time, it was the only instrument that I had. Uh, and he has played some pretty big shows with me. Yeah. Uh, now the only instrument, play. sorry, uh, the only instrument that you had that you played, not that you built, right? No, no, of no. course not. No, okay. I, I was, I was. This was mine out of a lineup of what became a little over two thousand of these things. Most of them were just four strings. Mongo has eight because I'm tacky that way. So you were talking about um, getting back into playing music. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, a Prince band. Or I would love Prince to cover see. band. Mm-hmm. A uh, tribute, I think, is a better word for tribute it. Tribute band. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, where, when, how? Well, as soon as I find the right lineup of musicians and I'm able to make the free time to do it, uh, honestly, I, there's a bunch of it I'd still have to learn to put together mm-hmm. a two-hour-plus show. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of it's a little more complicated than it sounds on, a, you know, just on the on the track. But it's something I'd like to do. I've been playing in bar bands off and on for, for a lot of my adult life, not nearly mm-hmm. enough. Uh, but I did get a good taste for it. I got to play a tribute show to him, a one-off, uh, back in February. Mm-hmm. That was very well received. I remember and I had a I, lot I of things. I had a lot of fun doing it, and it's something I'd like to maybe keep going with. And mm-hmm. as, as I said, I just want to put it out there. I have such fun being in front of folks. Yeah. Uh, you stand in front of large groups of people for some time, you know, and, and uh, there's a rush that happens there. I it don't is. know how to describe it. It, it. it is a rush, it definitely. You get a you get a sense of euphoric, especially afterwards. Mm-hmm. You you walk away from it and you've got this sense of energy, uh, euphoria. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless you screw up really well, bad and you're like, oh, even man. Even that has its merit. Good news, yeah. I've actually performed enough uh, in my life that I've failed enough. Where that's not going to hold me up anymore, uh, if it ever really did. But uh, I've done enough bad shows that no matter what happens, I bet you I have an event that happened previously that's worse. <laughs> so it can't have been as bad as that time I almost was electrocuted. You know, that kind of, you know, saw the beer bottle whiz by my head. You know, these are playing in the rain. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. Electric exactly. cords everywhere in the puddle. True story. Yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> All right, Jesse. I appreciate you stopping by. You too. Good luck. Thank you. You know, when you debut this instrument. Yes, indeed. I want to be there. I want to record it. And we will feature you on a, a future episode. Right on. All right? Right on. I'll even write your theme song. All right. I was okay. going gonna to mention that. Yeah. Uh, just an intro and then a, <laughs> an exit all the way. I it's got I kind do, of an original piece. I that can thing. do that. I can do that. That's freaking awesome, All man. right. All right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Uh, If you like what you see, if you like what you heard, smash that subscribe button and click on that like button, that thumbs up down there, and you'll start getting notices uh, for when the next video comes out. Thanks. See ya.